If you were to ask which two places on Earth are the most unique, the answer would undoubtedly be the South Pole and the North Pole. Welcome to Enigma Files. Previously, we made a video about the mysteries of the ocean. The ocean is mysterious because of its low visibility. Everything is hidden in darkness. But the South Pole and North Pole are different. In our modern era of advanced satellite systems, we can see these regions in their entirety without reservation. And yet, they remain incredibly unique and fascinating. Let's dive in. The South Pole is a continent, while the North Pole is a vast ocean. The Antarctic continent was discovered exactly 200 years ago. Despite two centuries passing since its discovery, very few people have set foot on this frozen land. Thus, Antarctica remains one of the oldest and most mysterious places on Earth. It spans 14 million square kilometers, or 5,405,430 square miles. Slightly smaller than Russia, but larger than the United States, China, or Canada. About 97% of Antarctica is covered in ice and snow, whereas the Arctic is two-thirds ocean and one-third land. The climates of these two polar regions also differ significantly, despite both being extremely cold. The average annual temperature in Antarctica is minus 50 degrees Celsius, while in the Arctic, it is relatively milder at minus 18 degrees Celsius. Why such a significant difference in temperatures? There are two main reasons. Elevation. The Arctic is mostly ocean, and even the land areas have low elevation. On average, the Arctic's elevation is only 10 to 20 meters, or 32.8 to 65.6 feet. In contrast, Antarctica has an average elevation of 2,000 meters or 6,561.7 feet, making it much colder. Notably, 90% of the Earth's ice is in Antarctica, and these are freshwater reserves, accounting for 70% of the planet's freshwater. Ocean Currents The Arctic Ocean connects to the Pacific and Atlantic Oceans, allowing warm currents from the equator to flow into the Arctic keeping its waters relatively warmer. Antarctica, however, is surrounded by the Antarctic Circumpolar Current, which forms a barrier that prevents warm waters from reaching the continent. This perpetuates the extreme cold throughout the year. In fact, Antarctica recorded the coldest temperature in Earth's history, minus 93.2 degrees Celsius or minus 135.8 degrees Fahrenheit, observed on August 10, 2010. At this temperature, carbon dioxide would freeze into dry ice. The Arctic's milder temperatures support vegetation like mosses, which in turn sustain herbivores. Where there are herbivores, there are predators. The Arctic is home to polar bears, the largest land carnivores. It's surprising to find such massive predators in such harsh conditions, but the reason they thrive there remains a mystery. Adult polar bears can grow up to 3 meters long or 9.84 feet long and weigh over 500 kilograms or 1,102.31 pounds, standing as the apex predators in the Arctic food chain. Other notable Arctic animals include Santa's reindeer, Arctic wolves, Arctic foxes and musk oxen, large shaggy cattle-like creatures. The Arctic Ocean also hosts a variety of marine life, including whales and seals. In contrast, Antarctica is much harsher. The extreme cold and dryness mean there's virtually no vegetation and consequently no land mammals. The most iconic Antarctic animals are birds, specifically penguins. Antarctica is home to penguins, while the Arctic has polar bears. You'll never find penguins in the Arctic or polar bears in Antarctica. Though the Antarctic land has little life, its surrounding oceans are teeming with creatures like whales and seals. Ownership of these regions is another stark contrast. The Arctic, being mostly ocean, consists largely of international waters, but its land portions are divided among eight countries. The United States, Canada, Denmark, Iceland, Sweden, Norway, Finland, and Russia. Antarctica, however, is unique in that it belongs to no nation. In 1961, 12 countries signed the Antarctic Treaty, designating Antarctica as a shared resource for humanity. 
This treaty prohibits ordinary people from entering Antarctica without specific purposes, such as scientific research. While tourists can visit the edges of Antarctica, entering its interior is highly restricted to protect its environment. What do the North Pole and the South Pole have in common? The first commonality between the two poles is that both experience polar day and polar night. These phenomena occur due to the tilt of Earth's rotational axis. The duration of polar day and night varies depending on latitude, but at the poles, each lasts for about six months. During the first half of the year, the North Pole is in constant daylight, while the South Pole is shrouded in darkness. In the second half of the year, the situation reverses. The North Pole falls into darkness, while the South Pole enjoys daylight. This means that for both the North and South Poles, a single year consists of just one day and one night. Another similarity is the occurrence of auroras at both poles. While most people are familiar with the northern lights, the South Pole experiences the southern lights simultaneously. The auroras are caused by charged particles from the solar wind interacting with Earth's magnetic field and being drawn toward the poles. This process produces auroras at both poles simultaneously, creating a glowing effect that can be observed from space. The North Pole has been inhabited for centuries, with indigenous peoples such as the Inuit living there. In contrast, the South Pole was thought to be uninhabited until certain indigenous myths, such as those of the Hopi people in the Americas, spoke of a mysterious white island in the Southern Ocean inhabited by godlike beings. If these myths refer to Antarctica, it suggests that the region may have once been home to people or even ancient civilizations. Over the last two centuries, scientists and explorers have made several astonishing discoveries in Antarctica. One of the most remarkable finds is the large number of meteorites discovered in the region. By 2010, over 48,000 meteorites have been collected, with many found in concentrated clusters. This concentration is due to the movement of the ice, which carries these meteorites to specific areas. In addition to meteorites, Antarctica has also yielded many fossils, including those of tropical plants, which suggest that the region may have once been in a warmer climate. Dinosaur fossils have also been found, providing evidence that Antarctica was once home to these ancient creatures. Perhaps one of the most peculiar discoveries is the finding of two crates of whiskey left behind by British explorer Sir Ernest Shackleton and his expedition team over 100 years ago. These crates were left in Antarctica and remain untouched until they were discovered in recent years. The whiskey is now housed in Ireland's National Museum. This discovery highlights the need for explorers to bring along such provisions when venturing into the extreme cold of the continent. Another mysterious find is a pyramid-like structure in Antarctica, which has drawn comparisons to the famous pyramids of Egypt. It is still uncertain whether this formation is man-made or a natural structure, but its resemblance to ancient pyramids has sparked intrigue. Despite its harsh environment, Antarctica is home to some truly enormous creatures. One example is the giant ice worm, which can grow up to 20 centimeters long or 7.87 inches, covered in hard, bristly hairs. These worms were discovered more than 600 meters or 0.37 miles beneath the ice. Additionally, giant sea spiders, which are typically small in other regions, can grow up to 30 centimeters or 11.81 inches in Antarctica. There are also unusually large shrimp species, such as the Antarctic shrimp, which can reach lengths of 10 centimeters or 3.94 inches, significantly larger than their relatives in warmer seas. Another example is the colossal squid, which can grow much larger than its counterparts in the Arctic. Before its discovery, the colossal squid was considered a mythical creature, but it is now a real-life marvel. One of the most incredible creatures in Antarctica is the Praia Dubia, a species of jellyfish that can reach up to 40 meters or 131.23 feet in length, making it the longest animal on Earth. Its long tentacles are particularly impressive, although the jellyfish's fragile body makes it difficult to find complete specimens. The enormous size of these Antarctic creatures has intrigued scientists, and there are a couple of theories as to why they grow so large. One reason is the high oxygen content of the frigid Antarctic waters. The cold water holds more oxygen, 
which allows organisms to grow to large sizes. This is similar to how larger creatures, such as dinosaurs, roamed the Earth during periods of higher atmospheric oxygen levels. Another reason is the relatively low number of predators in the region. With fewer creatures to prey on them, organisms in Antarctica have fewer limitations on their growth. For example, crabs and lobsters, which have exoskeletons, can grow as large as they want by continually shedding their shells. This constant ability to grow makes Antarctica a place where many creatures can reach enormous sizes. In summary, Antarctica remains one of the most mysterious and fascinating places on Earth with its extreme conditions and unusual discoveries, which often resemble alien worlds. We have only begun to scratch the surface of the secrets this frozen land holds, and there is much more to explore and understand. The next question is, why do they look like extraterrestrial beings? When we see them, we get the feeling that they might be from another planet. This brings us to an interesting topic that often appears in science fiction movies. Where do the things in these movies come from? Are they just the director's imagination? In fact, humans can't imagine things that they can't perceive. For example, we can't imagine what dark matter looks like because we can't perceive it. Similarly, we can't imagine what a 4D, 5D, or 6D world would look like because those dimensions are beyond our sensory experience. So, how could the director, who has never been to Antarctica, have such vivid ideas? The answer lies in DNA. DNA is the information passed down through generations from our ancestors, including what they saw, heard, and experienced. Some things we have never encountered, but we can still imagine them because our DNA provides this information. Therefore, while we may never have encountered extraterrestrial life, it's possible that our ancestors did. Additionally, in Antarctica, scientists have discovered subglacial lakes, lakes beneath the ice. There are over 150 of these lakes, and the largest is Lake Vostok. It's called Lake Vostok because it lies directly beneath Russia's Vostok Station. The Antarctic ice sheet averages about 2,000 meters or 1.243 miles thick, with the thickest sections reaching over 4,000 meters or 2.485 miles. How did they know there were lakes beneath the ice? It wasn't through high-tech instruments. It's actually visible to the naked eye. When you go to Antarctica and see flat areas of land, those are likely areas where lakes are hidden beneath the ice. The ice reflects the structure of the rocks below. If the bedrock beneath the ice is mountainous, the surface of the ice is mountainous. If it's flat, the surface is flat, indicating the presence of lakes below. The ice sheet in Antarctica has been around for at least 30 million years, meaning these lakes could have been sealed beneath the ice for that long. If these lakes harbor life, that life could be as old as 30 million years. In 1998, a Russian research team began drilling to reach these lakes, and by 2011, they were less than 100 meters or 328.08 feet from reaching the lake surface. They discovered that the water beneath the ice is liquid, which was unexpected since the thick ice above would suggest that the water should be frozen. The presence of tidal effects in the water further indicated the possibility of life. In fact, when the team was about 100 meters or 328.08 feet away from the lake, they discovered microorganisms in the ice. They were preparing to continue drilling, but two problems arose. First, the drill got stuck and couldn't move, and second, other countries advised them to stop, fearing that drilling into the lake could disrupt its ecosystem potentially introducing bacteria or other contaminants. There was also concern that the lake could harbor large organisms, as initial readings showed that the lake's oxygen content was unusually high. So high, in fact, that if we were to breathe the water, we wouldn't suffocate. This raises a possibility that large creatures live in the lake. High oxygen levels and the lack of predators in the environment are conditions that support the growth of large organisms, as we saw with the giant creatures in Antarctica. This situation is reminiscent of the conditions depicted in science fiction films, such as the 1989 movie The Abyss, where characters breathe oxygenated water. The discovery in Antarctica may indicate that large, alien-like creatures could exist beneath the ice. Given these extraordinary circumstances, many countries have called for a pause in drilling until they fully understand the potential consequences. Finally, the discovery of a human-like face in Antarctica is another mysterious find. 
What is this enigmatic face? It's so intriguing that it requires a whole video to explore, and we'll dive into this in a future episode. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to like and subscribe.